Hello, and we've got some analysis here, revision analysis of the uh, text 8.1 uh, Boxer Hansen review by uh, Flemish Webb. Um, one thing to say about this, yeah, bear in mind, it is by Flemish Webb, who is a man, it's not by Anna Whitman, Whitwum, sorry, um, who sometimes people, when they're writing essays and things, they haven't looked at it carefully enough, and it's actually by this guy Flemish uh, here. So we'll go through. Um, this is actually from the Independent. It doesn't say that, I think, in the uh, context at the top here. Um, but uh, So we've got a review of Anna Whitwum's novel, Boggs of Hanson, by the freelance editor and journalist Flemish Webb. So, if we start up here, we've got Boggs of Hanson is Anna Whitwum's first novel and was inspired by her grandfather, John Poppy, the young featherweight box at the Crown and Manor's Boys Club in Hoxton. So this deliberate use of passive voice here was inspired by her grandfather. It's not her grandfather inspired her first novel because the emphasis is on Anna Whitworm herself and Boxer Handsome. So it's actually on the book and the author. That's who we're really concerned about. But this is still interesting. But use passive voice. Put it down to the end of this sentence there. Uh, we've got um, boxing Lexus, so keep an eye out for that featherweight, and there's more examples of that, obviously, due to the subject matter of the uh, piece itself. Obviously, review has got to stick to what it's talking about, so that makes total sense. Then, uh, this familial collection gives this exciting debut and authenticity, which allows to a confident writing style, suggests Whitworm has a promising future ahead of her. There's a phrasal template there, such as such and such, or X has a promising future ahead of him or her. It's a phrasal template. So again, the benefit of familiarity. So we know that that's an easy to um, absorb phrase. And so reviews, I mean, the voice is going to be um, someone who knows what they're talking about. Uh, it won't necessarily, I wouldn't expect it to be overly formal. We'll look to see if there's any signs of informality. Um so yeah, it's mostly formal, but not not too formal and not too informal. So it kind of comes somewhere in between on the kind of spectrum of things because the persona, the voice that is being projected, is of um, someone who knows what they're talking about, but you can understand them. That's the sort of persona that uh, Webb is going for here. So the story opens as discourse marker there for a review. The story opens discourse marker. With Bobby, so these are obviously characters within the novel itself, so you're going to get proper nouns that refer to these uh, characters, and you're going to get a bit of a summary of a plot in a review, that's part of the genre as well. Um, both box in the same boxing club in East London, they are due to fight each other in the ring in, division, in a divisional competition in a week's time, but this flurry of fists, so you've got um, fricatives there, flurry of fists, and you've got, uh, that's metaphorical, it's real flurry, because you normally think of snow flurries and things, so that w works as well in that sense. Um, and he's suggesting this world of boxing, so fists, look, we've got featherweight, fists, um, bare-knuckled, and brutal, we can associate with all of those. Bare-knuckled associated with boxing as well. Uh, Bobby wins, but can't resist a victorious act of brutality that drives subsequent subsequent events. Another metaphor there. And it also works uh, to establish what the actual story is about without giving too much away, which is another part of uh, a review like this. So uh, Whitworm, Whitworm acknowledges the value of boxing in society and giving wayward kids a focus. So that's a bit of informality there, colloquialism. So remember I said that about the tone, the voice, Trainers acting as father figures to young men, though Derek, who runs the Captain Bo Bo Boys Club and keeps an eye out for Bobby and his other charges. Oh, sorry, I should say, sorry, through Derek. I got distracted then because I thought, oh, I haven't said parenthesis. There's parenthesis used there as well, which is another slightly more informal quality given to a piece like this, isn't it? And look, there's another one there, a fronted conjunction. The start of the next paragraph begins with a conjunction. So that continues with that. I'm just going to move the text down. So there we go. And uh, where we got to was, yeah, but she doesn't side away from the brutal side and the thin line that so separates regulated fighting in the ring from unfettered, unfettered violence 
outside it. So there you go. Sorry, just get the lightsaber back on. Regulated, unfettered violence. Regulated fighting. That's antithesis there between organised fighting and then just violence. You know, violent fighting that would take si take place outside of the ring. Casualties of this world. That's again um, metaphorical. And it's repeated, actually, as well, throughout the world Whitman creates. Joe, Bobby's father, was once a decent boxer himself, but is now a sad alcoholic, a broken shell of a man. That's familiar collocation, isn't it? I'm sure most people listening to this will have heard a fr that phrase before, a broken shell of a man, or, uh, you know, you'll have heard a very similar phrase. So that's familiar collocation. You know, it's easy to say, oh, it's cliched, it's predictable, but in non-fiction writing of this nature it, it sometimes makes sense to use things which people understand which uh, you can um, take on board the information more efficiently so it makes total sense in this kind of context um, with none other respect that his fists once commanded so that's um, right you could say that does actually work as synecdoche which is when you use a part to describe a whole. So you could use it like that. It does actually work as synecdoche. I'd be tempted to use metonymy here uh, because it's really, it, it's not just the part representing the whole, it's the fists. It's also associated with the idea of fighting. So I think I'll just push it into that. But I think either of those terms would actually work there really, if once explained. But that's what I think. Then uh, Bobby's mother, a victim of domestic abuse at the hands of Joe, uh, sees history repeating itself as her son follows in his dad's footsteps. So there's more familiar collocation there as well. And um, it's, it's idiomatic, really, isn't it? Following in footsteps. A slave to the code of honour that is ma this macho world demands. He repeats world a lot, doesn't he? Um, I'm not sure if that's deliberate, but he repeats it a lot. Macho is a pre-modifier worth talking about there as well, because again it's linking to boxing status and the plot of the novel as well. And uh, we've got a reference here to Shakespeare as well. Um, so this is like an exophoric reference, which as this is in the independent, um, you're going to see... Um, it's, it's the audience are familiar with this. It assumes the readers are familiar when he meets a local girl, Chloe, he suddenly glimpses an alternative to the world he has inhabited. Since so by the way, he's a world again. Look, look at that. Uh, the tragedy is that he lacks the emotional skills to seize this chance. And that's metaphorical as well. And seize this chance. And that sounds like familiar collocation too, doesn't it? Wilbur's writing is as sharp as a one-two combination. Now, one-two combination, that simile there, one-two combination, that's connotation that's a phrase with the connotations of boxing as well one two combination short punchy sentences ah stop my sides short punchy sentences so pre-modified there again and punchy deliberately um, he's, he's exploiting the double meaning there of it he's, he's just exploiting the connotations of boxing and punches but he's also using it in terms of short punchy uh, idea of them being efficient little sentences that capture effectively the brooding atmosphere of the East End, the threat of violence at every turn and the savagery of fighting. Savagery as well, we can link that to fighting and combat and boxing as well, if you want to take it that far. Then he cracked the bridge of his nose wide open, skin split, blood spat, Connor stumbled about headless. This is a quote. It contains, for the record, uh, a nice technique called parataxis, a series of short sentences. And in this case, these are actually minor. Um, no, actually, they're not minor. They're actually in terms of because there's a verb there. But so they're simple sentences, a series of short, simple sentences. And Connor stumbled about headless is metaphorical as well, and it's hyperbolic. But it's from the quote, so it's not really analysing the piece so much, but I thought I'd just use an opportunity to put the terms in. But the book is tender to a change of pace, as juxtaposition here, so tender to, and it's a discourse marker, shows you that there's more to the book than just violence. The actual novel's got more than that in it. Um, a change of pace that deepens the emotional resonance of the characters, 
Bobby is uncharacteristically unsure of himself when he first takes Chloe on a date. And again, another quote here on it. So she had a grip on him, a spell that held him in awkward moments he couldn't get out of. So, And then as part of the discourse structure, part of the genre, this is a promising debut, so summing up, a summation at the end. It will be interesting to see how Whitman handles subject matter in subsequent novels that is more distant from her, her own experience. Which in some ways is, I mean, maybe he's implying, yeah, this is good, but it's something that she knows about. Which really, in fairness, all novelists tend to write things about what you know about. I mean, it's difficult to write things you don't know about or not interested in anyway. So it seems a little unfair. But anyway, you've got to finish a piece, haven't you? And talking of finishing, I will finish there. And that was a bit kind of whistle-stop. But I hope you found that useful. And I'm now signing out. Goodbye. <laughs>